Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, I guess. <laughs> this video is a like timeline progression of me working on a four foot by three foot painting of myself in this like magical wilderness, if you will, with like plants and colors and some pretty cool things that I like how it turned out. So this video will be kind of long. I'm gonna have a voiceover of me just going through my process and you can see me redo the hands like a billion times because <laughs> it's really hard for me. Um, so yeah, that is that and I hope you enjoy the video. It's gonna be a long one, so get your snacks and your drinks and whatever you like. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hey guys, so we're jumping straight into the video. Um, this beginning portion is a little confusing and it's a little hard to see what's going on here, so bear with me. Um, I'm painting over an old painting that I worked on that I wasn't too happy with, not like specifically because of the appearance of it, more so I just didn't really like the direction that the painting was going in. I didn't have a strong enough, I guess, planning period and I was just kind of painting randomly I guess and uh, the proportions were kind of wrong and I don't know I just wasn't super happy with that result so I knew I could make something better out of this canvas and out of this uh, previous painting I had started so I just took a darker and lighter color than the background and just started filling in some flat shapes of the uh, figure that I'm going to be painting. Um, see, you can see here this is just uh, some really flat tones. There's really no shading. I'm just getting in some color to, uh, I guess, <laughs> like avoid the distracting background that was would make it a little hard to figure out what I'm painting. So right here is just me filling in the hair and some shapes, just trying to figure out where I'm going to be placing this figure and what am I keeping from the old painting and what am I uh, completely getting rid of. Here I fill in a couple of these big old plant leaves. I do these um, sporadically throughout the painting. Um, as you can see here, I'm not trying to uh, add any details, I'm really just blocking in the main shapes. Oh, here's the exciting part, not these weird lines. So this is where I start the face. Um, I normally don't start a face in this way. I'll block in the values and the shapes and just large areas of light and shadows. But here I wanted to try a little, uh, something a little different have it more straightforward and just put in the proportions of my face. Uh, here I'm just putting in like the dark areas and the light areas and just trying to establish a color base, um, especially with temperature, because I know the right side was a lot lighter in my reference than the left side. I probably just mixed that all up. Could be right side, left side, left side, right side, I don't know. <laughs> Here I'm just doing that same thing, except instead of flat values, I'm just kind of adding uh, a little bit more of a gradient, but still not adding any detail. I'm just kind of blocking out where I'm going to be painting. I kind of like the beginning stages of these type of paintings when I paint over an old piece and you can still see all of the colors from the other one, but they're kind of blending in with this new direction you're putting down. So it just kind of looks really chaotic, but there's something that I really like about it. Oh, as you can see in the video, I'm holding my phone and that's actually my reference. I do value painting from life and I think um, getting that true perspective is uh, very helpful and is kind of essential for you to grow as an artist, but I think using photo references can be very helpful and um, in certain cases maybe better than working from life, especially if it's uh, fantasy oriented, um, because I'm not, this figure in the painting is not actually sitting in this um, like mystical 
type of landscape using my reference of my body and focusing on that anatomy while tr focusing on the light, the backlit photo, and using that to my advantage for this fantasy type of realm. Blocking in some highlights here and just kind of figuring it out. I wasn't too pressured to start making it look good at these stages. I always know that there's the ugly stage of paintings and you can really see that as it goes on. I really struggled with the hands here, but in the end I do really like how this piece turned out and it was just really fun for me to work on. And as you can see, it kind of looks like a velociraptor claw. I really don't know what I was doing <laughs> with the hand in the beginning. My reference didn't have the best contrast, so my hands and fingers were just kind of like blending together. So I was really figuring out, this is where working from life would have worked a little better for me. <laughs> but yeah, we figure it out. This uh, claw looking crab hand goes away in a, in a bit. I do really like how the hands started out in the beginning though, because you can tell how much I struggled with it, because it's like, it looks completely different towards the end of the video, that hand on top there. This uh, clip is actually sped up 999% faster than I actually painted it. I. Um, painted this and these hands took a very very long time I think I was just struggling to figure them out and to render them find the basic values because as I said before the reference had very low contrast to where the hands were so I think if you are going to work from a photo reference just make sure it's well lit and uh, the lighting is consistent throughout the entire painting uh, that's something I really need to improve on to just make it a little easier to work on uh, these types of things. I'm just blocking in the shirt around here, making the hands just a little more evident before they're getting kind of um, hidden from the stuff in the background. <laughs> I remember thinking as I was working on this stage of the painting, if I should leave the torso just like this floating being and have it coming out of like smoke and stuff, but eventually you can see that I do fill in a torso and the beginnings of like the hips and um, legs, but I do crop it towards above the knees. I thought that would be a better composition than having her like just sit in front of the um, in the center of the canvas. I wanted some, like, difference to, like, add more interest and complexity to the composition. These arms were really fun to paint. I just blocked in the, uh, main values and the warm tones that came with my arms and the shadows. And I just found that these really like warm shadows in certain places were really interesting for my reference. And I thought they would work well when I go in and add the cool tones of the background. Like right here, I really like this um, light, light blue that's there. I think that really just makes the arms pop and the colors of the skin. Imagine if I could actually paint this fast, that would be really cool. I cannot. <laughs> I painted really slow. I had uh, five hours of footage, actually, and I had to condense it a lot, so uh, this 29-minute video is really me just sifting through all of that footage and trying to find the most, I guess, visually interesting or important parts. Um, as you can see here, I'm really painting over that hand. I just completely moved where the pinky is. Um, the hand still kind of looks like a crab. We're figuring it out. Just give me give me a minute, bear with me here. You'll see that it looks better towards the end. There's something just so 
um, fun that comes with painting over an old piece. You can use parts and aspects of the old painting in the final composition of your new one. I remember the shirt specifically that I was filling in there a minute ago. I wanted to keep some of that old painting to make it look like it was multi-dimensional and it was kind of see-through or like transparent or whatever you want to call it. Like um, it's kind of showing more than just a black t-shirt. And I thought that it was kind of a nice ode to the painting that I destroyed to work on this new one. Got that nice little fade in transition there. <laughs> really, I just had that real time painting moment for a bit, so I went in and put the time lapse, so I didn't want it to be this weird, like, jarring, all of a sudden I'm painting, like, super fast. <laughs> And on that note, I do have some real-time painting clips in here, although a lot of it is uh, time-lapse just because of how long the footage was. Paintings like these usually take me many, many hours. This one, I still have some details I'd like to put into it or areas to kind of tone back and areas to bring out. Um, but overall, this is kind of what the final result is going to look like. I do not have a website at the moment. I'm really looking into making one, but at the moment my Instagram is where I post all of my paintings and I do a lot of these paintings. I have like many figures in the wilderness or nature. Usually they're all tied to concepts and the uh, nature is representative of something else. So I do a lot of those paintings, but I don't really have anywhere to post them other than Instagram. So if you want to go check them out, that would be really, really cool. Um, on Instagram, I am the same name that I am here on YouTube. I'm Zafaria. I did post progress paintings. <laughs> what progress paintings? Progress pictures of this painting um, as I just first started carving out the face and the figure from this background. And I thought it was just really interesting and in showing that process that I never really show. Usually I just uh, post final products and where I think it's left the ugly stage. But I think it's valuable to show that process and show that there really are moments where you don't really know how it's going to work out. And you really just have to push through it and bring the painting to what it really can be. This is the third time I've painted over that hand. <laughs> Moving that pinky, man. The pinky was really confusing. I do really like this like light blue aura that's kind of like coming out and backlighting the figure while also like the sun or whatever light source may be outside is lighting up that one side of her face. I think it's just a nice um, contrast in colors. However, in the future, I would like to have that blue light really just casting those blue tones all over the skin. I think that's something I would like to improve on is having the background impact the figure's colors a lot. Um, here, I, could, I tried a little bit, but I could have taken that to a higher degree, I think, of having that blue light really cast those uh, cooler temperatures all over the skin. This is where the hand starts coming into its shape and I'm actually uh, finding myself satisfied with it. I put some more of those cool tones in there as you can see. I rubbed away some of the saturation though because it was pretty bright um, and I was trying to bring it back to that muted uh, blue tone right there. I put a little hair tie on there, that's uh, what the little black line is. Here I am just carving more of the figure shirt out. I still 
Again, I wanted to keep the background still evident, although I did kind of bring uh, that background more to completion because that was never painted. That was just a tone from the previous outline of the first painting. I did cover some of that background. I added some like color shards and kind of bringing in the new background colors that I was placing in, like that blue light I was just talking about. Um, and I think this really just rounded all of those colors together in these crazy, sh <laughs> crazy, <laughs> sound like I have a lisp there for a second. Um, these crazy uh, details and like contrasting backgrounds that I really had to figure out. Um, this is kind of a difficult process. I think um, painting over this complex background benefited the final result, but it may be easier sometimes to just tone the background all one color and go from there. Here I am adding some more of those details, putting in uh, the ends of the hair, and just figuring out these shapes that I've put down to work from. There's me. <laughs> I believe this clip is real time. Oh no, I think it, actually yeah it is. It's, um, it's a real time clip of me just filling in that leaf shape above her head and just mixing some of the paint on the palette there. In the next couple clips I am sped up I believe uh, just to make these clips shorter but I wanted to show you what it looks like when I'm putting in those base tones and just filling in these blocks of colors to make it easier to work on this background. This is where I was really contemplating leaving her this floating torso in the middle of the canvas. I was thinking it was looking like a genie almost, how they like come out of that little, what is that, the little like bowl thing, teapot looking thing, I can't remember. <laughs> but the, when the genies are like floating out and you can't see their legs, it reminds me of um, the Fairly Odd Parents genie. But that's just me. <laughs> I was thinking of leaving it and being like, oh yes, this is a genie and not, and not a normal figure. <laughs> but here I am, kind of giving in to what I should really be doing. <laughs> so I put in some legs, and this is her hips at the moment, put in my jeans that I was wearing in the reference. I really just wanted it to emulate what I wear, what I look like, um, because this was a personal painting. And here I am just blocking in those blue tones of the denim and just kind of trying to figure it out. I wasn't being too too careful at this stage, just blocking in the primary shapes like I was before. I find this little part really satisfying when I block in the colors of my stomach with that red and that like peachy toned color right on the edge there because before that it was like these cool toned or like muddy colors from the previous painting so I think this just looks really nice tying it in and it kind of brings those arms um, closer into like a similar color range as the rest of the painting I found. As you can see, I jump around a lot. I don't usually uh, paint one thing and finish that and then go on to paint the rest. I kind of like to paint the whole painting at once in a way. I like to see the progression of the whole piece and see how each thing works with itself. Like, I just want to make sure everything looks consistent and um, that if I finish, say, the face and then I work on the rest of the body, and the face wouldn't match like the colors of the rest of the painting. Yeah, so it's just, it makes it easier to paint the whole thing at once and just kind of do the main shapes, block in the colors, and then start going in details and making everything really consistent. Hopefully that made sense. My dog walked over here and I got distracted. <laughs> Thank you.
I really like how these jeans turned out. I think the, these little highlights really made it cool. It's kind of um, contrasting from the other fabric, the shirt in the piece, because I really didn't render the shirt because I wanted the abstract elements from the old pain, painting to um, pop out. So um, the jeans were where I could really render that fabric. Oh, here's where I'm putting in those little um, like purple clouds of smoke that I put in. So this is a real-time clip. You can see me just filling it in. And then here I do that little like wrist swivel trying to get those nice rounded like smoky organic shapes in there. These were so fun to do. I've never done something like this where I just like let the paint run out of the brush as I'm going down um, the painting. I just really liked that. It was super fun. I want to do that in like more paintings I do. Just let the paint underneath and the white paint that I put over top just kind of make the shapes without me even doing it. It's just a really cool way to see the painting come together when I'm not really forcing the outcome. It's just kind of doing it itself. <laughs> Oh, as you can see in these pictures, I moved locations, so I'm actually in my little art room, art studio thing. Um, the painting that's right behind my arm in this is my best friend's face. We did a collaboration painting in high school where we are um, facing each other and playing patty cake. It's really cute, but we never finished it. Um, so that's just her face on the left there. And up on top, right above that, is another painting I did in junior year of high school with some more hands. And it's funny because it almost looks like a similar position that the painting, the hands in this painting are. So that's just fun. I am in my, or coming up on my sophomore year of college, I'm in art school and I go to MIAD, so Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design, and I get to paint a lot this semester, so I'm super excited about that. I get to just do this all the time, so I'm so excited, and I'm really excited to um, improve and just kind of figure things out, work on new concepts and stuff, so that's going to be really cool. Here I am doing that same technique that I did earlier with the blue around the arm. When I was carving it out right here, I'm just putting that light yellowy lime color around the head, just contrasting these colors and putting things that I think really bring out the figure in the foreground while not uh, pushing the background too far back because I really wanted it to look like this immersive, smoky, foggy, cool background type of thing. I'm just carving in some shapes for the leaf up there. I really like how that leaf turned out. I didn't shade it very much because I didn't want all of the attention to be brought to that, but I do think it looks really cool. This painting really came together on its own. A lot of it wasn't pre-planned or... Um, I guess even thought about like I do for most of my other paintings. I really write down what I want the painting to look like, what aspects I want to put into it, but this one I really just sat down and started painting it. I didn't even have a, um, a preliminary sketch for this. I just kind of started going with it. And I really like how it turned out. It was just super organically made, so I wasn't um, trying to control any of it really. It just came to shape by itself. I think it's crazy if you like rewind in the video and see what it looked like in the beginning and now with this new foreground placed all around it, it's just crazy to see what the old painting was and how I was working with that versus what it is now. I just think it's just such a cool transition. I think this is why painting is just so fun for me because I really never know exactly what it's going to look like at the end, and it's just a super cool, fun thing to explore, really.
if any of y'all are still here, you really made it. Y'all are the cool ones. You should comment. Hmm. What you? What should you comment? <laughs> Just something. Comment. Hmm. Blue fog is cool or something, because that's what I'm painting right now. Um, if you made it this far, you're a pretty cool dude. I'm doing the same technique here that I did with the purple smoke um, initially. I am just putting down a really wet layer of dark blue paint and then putting white mixed with whatever colors I had put into it and just dragging that through the wet paint um, just to see what organic shapes it can create. Um, I did mix these colors, but I really wanted the white to kind of take over the colors that I put into the white, so um, it would really have that uh, value change when I drag it through the dark paint, so it'll just kind of mix on its own, so that was just something I was exploring. Um, and I do like how it turned out. I think it's still really saturated, but um, it doesn't take away from the figure and just the other colors in the piece, so it's pretty cool. Take a shot every time I say cool in this <laughs> video. <laughs> At this stage of the painting, I was really uh, just putting in details and figuring out the face, um, the cool tones and the temperatures of the skin, and just kind of rounding out the painting. In the beginning, I really just had those shapey marks, and originally it was just those lines of where my eyes were going to be, but now I'm really putting in those details, those extra little highlights and stuff, and um, figuring it out jumping around again, going back to the rest of the painting. I'm putting in these vines and leaves and things, and I do like how these worked out. I think if I were to do this painting again or revise it, I would put more um, something of a warm tone down at the bottom. I think the bottom, have it like having it watery and just like marshy down there, I would like to have something that's warm tone to kind of break that. I think the bottom gets a little bit forgotten, not really, but like in the scheme of things because all of those colors and value shifts that are at the top of the painting versus at the bottom of the painting, I would like to um, either fix that or just take that um, advice with me for my next painting. I noticed that the face didn't have enough cool tone, um, considering it was next to these blue lights and blue fog, so I just kind of put in some purples and, um, things that would make more sense, other than this, like, bright yellow, uh, light that I had on it. I was just kind of rounding it out and figuring out what this figure would actually look like if I was standing in this environment. in some leaf details. <laughs> I love plants so much, but I literally cannot keep them alive. They all die. <laughs> like, why do they die? I water them and stuff, but it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, so here is the final result. And if you stuck out this far, you guys are really, really cool. <laughs> so here's me. Um, I actually filmed that on the day of, so... I hope you guys uh, like this and uh, subscribe or do whatever you want really. <laughs> this painting was super fun to make and I'm really happy with the result. And if you guys want to stick around and see more of the work that I make, that would be super cool. You could follow me on Instagram and subscribe here. If you like this video, that really, really helps me. I'm just starting out and I think it's just cool to share these types of things with you because here on YouTube I can show you the process that I really can't on Instagram with just photos and short videos and things like that. So super cool to uh, be able to post here and show my work really. So um, thank you for watching and yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs>